always there was still space um, for me to do the little nuggets, health nuggets. And um, through the past weeks and over the months, we have been hearing so much, getting very good um, uh, what we suggestions, um, both from Elder Dean and others, and especially Yuchi Pines, that was just here recently. And so I wondered, what should I talk about? <laughs> Because we have been, we should be really marching now because we have been getting some very good um, suggestions as to how we eat and so on and so forth. But I always, I'm going to just mention something that I've discovered, that I've found in, you know, just relating with people. And that's one of the things, especially when we have a health seminar, people are, have become so excited that they tend to just go all out trying to get, you know, into these things. Um, so if anybody here diagnosed with high blood pressure, I would, I would suggest that we do not just stop taking our medications, not at all. And if we want to tr improve, you know, in every situation, the physicians will tell us that losing weight, eating right, stop smoking, stop, some of those things we don't, um, is not for us really. But the, as it relates to um, the blood pressure, I'll suggest you get yourself a machine. Please get yourself a machine if you're going to try to do anything, right? Know what your values are. Check your Medicaid, check your blood pressure daily. If you want to um, start eating healthy, please let your provider know. The doctor always are always happy when the patients are doing something to help themselves. So that is just one little thing, that blood pressure issue, because I've known of cases, people have gone to church and hear this thing, and have gone, boom. I can tell you, because I know it. I have, exp not me, I have, yes, family, I've experienced it. People have gone to church, and they've been so overwhelmed and excited about this new thing that they've heard, stop taking everything, and the next thing, they have a massive stroke. So whatever we do, we must learn that we must take everything in strides. The doctors are, or your providers, whoever they are, are always happy to know that you are take, doing something to help, help yourself. But um, and apart from that, um, we talk about eating nuts and fruits and, and grains. Grapefruit was a great delight, one thing I like very much. But if you, ha if you are diagnosed with some other autoimmune diseases, um, be careful how you use grapefruit and some of the nuts, walnuts and so on and so forth. They, it's like a lock and key situation. Or the finish line, maybe that's an easier way to put it. They're both going toward the same site. So, we must take, if you're taking centroid or whatever, I'm talking about like that, that specific um, hyper, um, autoimmune disease, actually. Please, you can eat your nuts four to six hours after you take your medication. If not, it will just delete all of what you're doing. You have the hypothyroid because it's, it's not, um, the thyroid is not, put, it's not putting out enough of that um, thing that will help you, all right? So that's something that came to my mind while I sat there. If I sound like I'm a little disjointed, <laughs> it just came to my mind that I should, I should mention that. But I was going to say something about antibiotics. Almost everybody I know, I hope you're not one of them, my brothers and sisters, have some leftover antibiotics at home. How do we end up getting leftovers? We have leftover food and so on, but not antibiotics. They're designed in a specific amount for a specific period of time in order to complete the job. So we hear everybody wants to live healthy and, no, and everybody thinks that we do not need antibiotics. Yes, we get sick and sometimes we need antibiotics to get rid of the bacteria. But antibiotics do not treat viruses. And so bro my brothers and sisters, when you go to your physicians, please do not fool them that you're having 
something more. People do that. You do do that. They go and say, oh, I'm coughing up this green stuff. And it's, you can, the doctor can only do for you what you tell them. So be true to yourself and help your physician to help you as well. So remember now, I'm not going to take too much time. It's just to, if you do not take your antibiotics properly, it tends to lead to resistance. Resistance is this. You, okay, so it was able to work and treat this problem that you have successfully. But three days in the process, you stop taking it. Uh-oh, that's like a drunken little man. He drunk, they, they get a little dizzy, they go, and then they get up and guess what? They are now able to survive in that environment. Meaning, and I hope I'm saying it, we have a doctor. We have a doctor in here. I hope I'm treading on, on some of the ground this, this morning. But um, I think I'm right in that regard. That please do that. Please do take your medications and finish them. All the antibiotics, especially so that next time around, should you require. Another thing with taking it, 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 put a, it puts a burden on the healthcare system. If you do not take your medic, that's if you become, when the normal, back, the, no, the cheaper antibiotics are no longer um, doing the job they're supposed to do, now is a different level. The second and third generation antibiotics are much more expensive and much more difficult to get by. We need to be wise. We are children of the living God. Okay, so we are living in an earth, in a world with sin and all the problems that we get from genes. We have family members who have this high blood pressure or whatever. We have to take care of ourselves. Some of the things we can do, apart, remember now, always take care. Nobody should have any leftover antibiotics at home. Okay, nobody should always complete it. But we can help to control some illnesses as well. When we are sick, when we are sick, my brothers and sisters, you're not feeling well, please stay home. Do not love your members, so, do not love your other brothers and sisters so much that you come and cough and miss, do, and you do everything. Oh, now, please, I do not mean anything, but I, I mean what I'm saying, but I do not mean to hurt anybody's feelings, okay? <laughs> Point is, we cover up, we wash our hands, and we proper food hygiene as well. We prepare food. We always wash our hands, cook food, the period of time, heat up food at the temperature in which they should be the temperature. We should always go beyond 250 degrees to warm up um, something like that, okay? And But one of the main, main things here is antibiotic resistance is putting a burden on the healthcare system. As children of the living God who are planning to live with him forever, let us, let us be wise as serpents as we travel in this world. Thank you.
our loving God and our Father, as we come, we supplicate your throne and we invite your sweet spirit to dwell in each heart. As we worship you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. All right. Let's start by continuing worship with our opening hymn, uh, 210. Is it 210? Number 10. Number 10. Come, Christian, joy to sing. Amen. time for our scripture reading now brothers and sisters it is so good to see each and every one of you here today let's go to revelation chapter 6 starting at verse 12 through the end of the chapter let's read this you read the second verse i'll read the first verse and we'll alternate that way down through the the whole scripture starting at verse 12 I will read and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood everyone else read and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Everyone read the last verse. Amen. 
for the great day of the wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? How many can say amen to that verse? As far as possible, shall we kneel and sing our song for worship? Now, dear Lord, as we come to you in prayer dear father we thank you that you can are with us that your spirit is here guiding in every word that is said every action that is had we pray that we will be your children that we will stand true for you though the heavens fall and though other men fade we will not because your spirit is guiding us in the way that we should go be with each person here. Be with them as they pray to you and as they worship you, that your spirit will guide. Be with the pastor as he brings us the message. May your spirit give him the words to say and may we be ready when you come in the clouds of heaven. This we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Welcome, visitors, and welcome everybody else. It is so nice to be in the house of the Lord this morning. The sun is shining. It was rather foggy coming in. I don't know how you folks came in, but coming in from Fort Ritchie, it was, I had to have my lights and my windshield wiper going. Our tithe offering today is for the annual sacrifice for global mission. If you don't want to put that in there, don't forget, you have your little envelope in front of you. If you choose to make another choice, that's your choice. Will the deacon stand, please? Let us pray. Our Father whom art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead of you and arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. Whoever sons sparingly and whoever sows so those bountifully or under compulsion or love or cheer for his, God loves a cheer for his giver. 
and God is able to make all grace abound you, so that having sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, he has distributed freely, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our story this morning is about Zacchaeus. Anyone know who Zacchaeus was in the Bible? He was a greedy man. He was. Okay, she said he was a greedy man. That's part of it. And she said he was a little man. Both of you telling the truth. And he climbed up the tree and he said, Zacchaeus. Okay, we'll hear that. We'll hear that in a minute. We'll do that in a minute. Okay, but you know, Zacchaeus, even though he might have been little and he was a greater man, but he also had some goodness in him. Because he had heard John talking about Jesus. And you know what? Jesus was passing through Jericho. And that was the city that Zacchaeus lived in. And he heard that Jesus was passing that way. And he wanted, he heard all about Jesus, but he really didn't know who he was. And he wanted to know who Jesus was. So he decided he was going and see who Jesus was. But when he got out there, there were so many people, and he was so little, he thought, 
It's no way I'm going to see Jesus today if I keep on walking behind these people. So you know what he did? He ran ahead. And he, knew, he said, oh, there is a sycamore tree right down the road. And the limb is hanging over the street, and that's where I'm going. So he ran, and he perched himself up on one of those branches. And he said, I'm in a good place. Now I'm going to be able to see Jesus when he passed that way. But you know what? Jesus was also looking for Zacchaeus. So when Jesus get right under that limb, he just paused for a minute. And everyone stopped. And Jesus looked up in that tree and he said, Zacchaeus, would you please come down? Because today I'm going to your house. Wasn't that great that Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' house? But, you know, there were also people that was looking. They said, hi, if he knew who that was, he wouldn't want to go to his house because he's a sinner. But you know what? The Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was a Jew, but he was also a tax collector. And they didn't like him because he used to exact some money that wasn't his. But you know what? Jesus can change her life no matter who it was. And Zacchaeus came down off the tree, and he was so happy to see Jesus. And you know what Jesus said to Zacchaeus? He said, Zacchaeus, today salvation come to your house because you accept me as your Savior. And you know what? Jesus loves Zacchaeus, and Jesus loves each and every one of us. And isn't it nice that we can all invite Jesus not only to come to our house but to live in our heart? And when we invite Jesus to live in our heart, we will always do what is right. We will not want to take anything that's not ours. We will be happy to know that we can help someone instead of take something away from them. So just remember that no matter who we are, Jesus loves us. And no matter what we've done, Jesus can forgive us. And that goes for all of us, no matter who we are. We can be grown up or we can be little, but Jesus forgives our sins. So, and there is a little song that we would like to sing with you ladies. Do you guys know what Zacchaeus, the song about Zacchaeus? Okay. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at your house. So let's all invite Jesus in our house today. I'm going to your house today. Okay. Amen. Let's close our eyes and we'll say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us here safely. Thank you for waking us up. And thank you for everyone here. And thank you for this little Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys maybe go back to your seat. Thank you. We have reached a moment when our pastor will deliver the word message to us. Our song of meditation, our hymn of meditation is hymn number 517, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Shall we stand please? Thank you. 
Please be seated. Loving, kind, gracious Father, as our hearts are lifted up to you, Father, we pray that you will condescend and be in our hearts as we meditate and speak forth your words. Bless us, we pray. Bless each heart. And make the message be meaningful to each heart in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. All right, today we are going to be talking about the sixth seal. We have been doing the series on the seals, and we are on the sixth seal. There is only one more seal to, to go. And um, uh, next Sabbath, we will be having uh, uh, one of our special speakers. Osmar Palmer. No, sorry. Osmar Pharaoh. <laughs> Palmer is in my mind, but Osmar Pharaoh. So, also we'll be having some special music, is that correct? We'll be having some special violin music with the children. Uh, they will be here, so we invite you to come and be a part of it and just enjoy the presentation. And then the following Sabbath, when I return, I will also be here with another speaker. Uh, so I will not be speaking that Sabbath on the 25th. We will be having Pastor Leo from the East Pasco Church. He will be giving us the message. He will be coming here for the very first time. So we invite you to invite your friends. And he should be here today, but he was unable to make it today because he had to go to Ocala because the conference asked him to do that and so he was not able to come today. So may the Spirit of God bless us. This evening, this evening we are not going to be having the John seminar. El Passard is not here and because I'll be gone to River, uh, Riverview to do the baptism uh, it will be a little bit rushy to return for that. So we are going to bypass this evening and next week we'll have the John seminar. So we will just invite you to enjoy the rest of the Sabbath after lunch and just meditate on the goodness of God and have a good family time this evening and close the, the, the Sabbath at home with a vesper. What do you say? All right, so as we go through the sixth seal, I don't know if we have the slides. We were having difficulty with the slides, but I see a positive hand that the slides are working okay. And as you notice, it's a six seal. So we are going to just invite our, we are thankful for you. And we just invite you to put it on the first slide, which is Revelation chapter 6, 12 through 17, which is our scripture lesson. We're going to read that again. So here is the sixth seal. So may the Spirit of God bless us as we open his words and meditate on his words today. Here it says in scripture, And I beheld when he had done what? Opened the sixth seal and lo, the Bible says there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of air. And the moon became as blood. The stars of heaven fell upon the earth. It's significant. Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. The scripture tells us that and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountain. The Bible says, and, uh, said to the, and they said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us 
from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? And this is the key in the text that I would like us to remember today. Who shall be able to stand? And so Revelation chapter 6 keeps us in form about events leading up to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look again at the characteristics of the first five seals that we dealt with before. In the first five seals, we recognize that the first seal was what? The white horse and Christ. Uh, it talks about uh, Christ's victorious death or his vicarious death and the triumphant preaching of the gospel. And when we talk about the vicarious death, it tells, telling us that Jesus Christ died in our place. He died so that we can have salvation. And because he died, then the apostolic church were preaching the gospel, the gospel of grace. And it is wonderful to know that they preach and the gospel uh, was triumphant because many people rejoiced and were baptized. It's wonderful also to recognize, according to the second seal, that the red horse appeared after the white horse. And what happened during this time, during, under the red horse, uh, it, it, this rider had a sword, and it was allowed to take peace from the earth. It is interesting to know that when the gospel is being preached, the devil is not happy. And so he will bring about what we call a controversy. And this is the controversy that was happening. And this is, a sim this is symbolic of the spiritual warfare and the rejection of the gospel. But under the third seal, there is a block Horse. The rider is holding a scale for weighing food as a result of a famine. And also I want to say that this is symbolic of the fact that because of the scarcity or the scarcity of the gospel and the rejection of the gospel message, the corruption also that enter the church and the gospel work was no longer the pure gospel. It created what we call a famine for the word of God. A famine for the word of God. And I tell you, beloved, that the time is coming that there will also be a famine for the word of God to be preached in his church. But we also want to notice in the, the, the fourth seal that there was the the, and under the fourth seal, there was the, the, what we call the pale horse. The pale horse actually signified death and hell follow. Because of the scarcity of the gospel, there was, we call it the spiritual death because, because men needed the gospel. And it is important. Interesting, death and hell follow. They were allowed to destroy people over one fourth of the earth by sword, by famine, by diseases, and wild beasts. And so I say the rejection of the gospel result in what? Spiritual death. But under the fifth seal, we are told that under the fifth seal, there was no horse under the fifth seal, but under the fifth seal, the soul of the martyrs were heard. And the martyrs, in a specific sense, are those who preach the gospel, but they were put to death or they were burned at the stake because of their faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, beloved, it is important for us to be faithful to God even 
regardless of the circumstances. Sometimes we are not faithful to God because there are situations that we will say God understand. But God has given us his words and God wants us to understand that his words are sure. So the martyrs cried out to God for vindication against their, those who persecuted them. And this is a symbolic cry for the martyrs to be vindicated for their unjust death. But here, under the sixth seal that we are going to be dealing with today, under the sixth seal there is no horse. But there are signs leading to the coming of Jesus Christ. Signs to Christ's coming and judgment. And so, beloved Christian friends, it also depicts the judgment against those who reject the gospel and harm God's people. So John, in Revelation, is seeing in vision the same signs Jesus talked about when we studied Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 30, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall what? The sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be what? Shall be shaken. The Bible tells us, and then shall appear the signs of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with what? Power and great glory. This is what God's people are looking for. John, like Jesus, described the darkening of the sun and moon and the falling of the stars as occurring at the end of the tribulation. And when we talk about the end of the tribulation, we are talking about the end, or the, it correlates to the end of the 1260 uh, prophetic days or year period that ended in 1798. So, beloved Christian friends, these are critical times that we are living in. And I want us to uh, please note three major historical events that John mentioned under the sixth seal. Three major ones. The great earthquake. It talks about the great Lisbon earthquake that took place when? 17... When? 1755. Some 60,000 people were killed in Lisbon alone. And shock waves and tsunami killed thousands more. So earthquake has taken place throughout the world all along. But this is one of the significant and one of the disastrous earthquake Christians linked to this prophecy. And so, beloved friends, we are also told that historically the second thing that John mentioned was the dark day. The dark day of 1798. 17 when? I'm happy that you are looking. 1780. All right, so the sun become black as sackcloth of air and the moon became as blood. So the dark day was actually May 19, 1780. The earth was affected and the effects of this earth, uh, this event was actually felt or seen in different places. It was seen in New York. It was seen in New England and other places. But I want us to also move quickly to recognize the next great event 
that John talked about. That would be the falling of the star, the spectacular event. The stars of heaven fell unto earth, even as a fig tree casted her untimely figs, John said, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, an amazing meteor shower of stars occurred over the Atlantic Ocean. And so, beloved, that was November 13, 1833. These events led to a series of revival and awakening in North America because men and women recognized that something supernatural was happening. These are signs that happened long ago, but they are signs telling us that Jesus is near to return. And this is one of the points I would like us to remember, that Jesus is near to return. And so, beloved, even if we should live a hundred years, we don't know when Jesus will call us. He may call us to death tonight, tomorrow, soon, or even a couple of years from now, but it is soon. God has given us a lifespan to live, to prepare for his coming. And when we think about soon, soon with God is different from soon with man. The concept is we don't know when Jesus is coming, but we are to be prepared for the time when he comes because it tells us that we are to be, we are to be watchful, we are to be ready because at such a time, we do not know. So, beloved friends, according to what is recorded in Scripture, Matthew 24, 42 through 44, it says, Watch therefore for a what? Know not what hour your Lord does come, but know this, that if the, grew, uh, the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would what? He would have watched and would have not and would have not have suffered his house to be broken up. Amen. This is important. So Jesus tells us in scripture, therefore be he also ready. For in such an hour as he think not the Son of Man cometh. Are you with me, beloved? Watch, for in such an hour as they think not, the Son of Man cometh. Oh, beloved Christian friends, we have the record in Revelation 6, 14, and the heaven departed as what? As a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. What it, this is telling us that the parting as a scroll being rolled up is mentioned also in other part of the scripture which we would like to make note of because it is telling us something significant according to what is recorded in Isaiah chapter 32, 4 and 5 it says, and all the hosts of heaven shall be what? Dissolve and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Is that something? For my sword shall be what? Shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edomia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. And I want us to recognize the word idumia. We may not look at that word too often in the scripture, but idumia would indicate that those who do not pay respect 
to the word of God. It will be the enemy of God. Edom, those who reject the word of God and do not follow the word of God. God is telling us that there will be judgment. It will be judgment on the wicked. But the good thing is the people of God can rejoice because they will be safe and secure. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, yes, beloved Christian friends. This is a depiction of the Lord's return, and we are to be ready. When Jesus returns, there will be no excuse. Are you with me? There will be no excuse for everyone because we all should be making preparation and we all should be ready. The scripture says in Revelation 6, 15 through 16, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and whom? Chief men and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man, they hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. Isn't that something? They are hiding themselves from the Lord. John observed people of all walks of life running away, trying to hide from the Lord. He saw them begging the rocks and the mountains to cover them in order to protect them from fear of the one who sits on the throne. Isn't that something? It is, it, 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 it is the same Jesus. Let me say it again. It is the same Jesus that came to this earth with love in his heart. And he made a tremendous sacrifice because his father loved us with an everlasting love. And Jesus came to die in our place. And it is the same Jesus now men are running and hiding from. But it is not intended for men to run and hide from Jesus. It was intended for men to run and rejoice and embrace Jesus in his glorious coming. Because the word of God tells us, beloved, uh, let's move to the next slide. For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not what? perish but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved but it's because of sin men and women will hide from God what a day when men feel the need to hide from God John state that at the manifestation of these last days of cosmic signs, the unrepented sinners will hide from God. Beloved Christian friends, how sad is this note to us? Men hiding from God instead of running to embrace and praise God. The six seals gives this, a description of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The second coming of Christ, according to what Matthew tells us, it will be a time of great glory. Not a time for us to, to run away, but it will be a time for us to rejoice. That's why we are here in the house of God, in the house of worship, so that we can be prepared for that day. Here we are told, but let's uh, move forward from that uh, slide because it tells us that men were hiding from God. But here it says, And then shall appear the signs of the Son of Man in heaven, and they shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in where? In the clouds of heaven with what? With great power. With power and great glory. This is wonderful. The martyrs under the altar are crying for God's intervention. This is symbolically 
Uh, it is symbolic. The second coming is the occasion when God will intervene to punish sin and defend his faithful people. Amen. Is that wonderful? To, 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 this, this will be a, uh, this should be a sobering day for all humanity. The six seals ends with a very important question which I mentioned from the beginning because it says the great day of the, of the wrath, of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? That's the question that each one of us should be able to answer but I'm happy that the scripture gives us some information where that is concerned because Psalm 50 and verse 3 through 4 says, Our God shall what? And shall not keep silent. Fire, a fire shall what? Devour before him and it shall be very tempestuous about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to what? The earth that he may judge his people. But I also like what it tells us in Joel chapter 1 and verse 15. Joel chapter 1 and verse 15 says, Alas for the day. Alas for the day. For the day of the Lord is where? Is at hand. So the scripture is telling us that the day of the Lord is at hand. And when it says this day of the Lord is at hand, it is telling us that the coming of the Lord is near, is soon, and as a destruction for the Almighty shall it come. The Christian don't need to fear. Only the wicked who do not respond to the call of salvation. Today, that's why we preach the gospel, so that men and women can be prepared. Malachi 3 and verse 2 says, But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appear? For he is like a what? A refiner fire, and like a fuller soap. And we know what those two words signify, refiner, fire. Fire can purify. Soap also purify. That's why we wash our clothes. So the blood of Jesus wash us clean when we surrender our lives to him. So beloved Christian friends, let us be prepared. Psalm 50 and verse 23 says, Whosoever uh, offer it praise, glorify me. Amen? And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I what? Show the salvation of God. Isn't that a beautiful passage? It is talking about our, the word conversation is referring to our behavior, our way of life on a daily basis. When we order our lives in harmony with the requirements of God, with the requirements of Jesus Christ, we are actually showing praises to God and God will give us salvation because he sent his son Jesus Christ to this world to provide salvation for each one of us. Let's hear what John has to say because John here is explicit in his words according to what is recorded in Revelation chapter 7, 1 to 3. And after these things I saw what? Four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not what? Blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on what? Amen. Nor on the tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, beloved Christian friends, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have what? Sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And the life we live today, 
God is placing the seal of the Holy Spirit on us as a sign, a mark that no harm will come to his people. We praise God. We rejoice. So as Christians, we should not be sad today. We should rejoice. Our God is good and there is hope for the faithful people of God. So John tells us that those who stand before God will be God's people whom he sealed. And we can say praise be to God. So let us consider uh, just a few Bible texts before we uh, come to our conclusion. Uh, here in 2 Timothy 2 and verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth how? Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from what? From iniquity, depart from sin, and surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what it actually is saying to us. But we also hear from the Apostle Paul in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 1, it says, verses 12 through 14, that we should, uh, all right, the slide jump back. Let's go put it back to Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 12 through 14, that says that we should be, uh, we should be to what? The praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom he also trusts that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that he believed. So when we hear the gospel of salvation, we should believe the gospel of salvation and we should live the gospel of salvation because what? He was sealed with that holy spirit of promise. So God promised to seal us with his Holy Spirit. It says, which is the what? The earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Have you ever received an inheritance? Well, some of us might have. Well, my inheritance was beautiful. I received an inheritance too. But my inheritance that I received mainly was the instruction that my parents give me to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the greatest inheritance. As a matter of fact, my mother did also, she sold a piece of land when I was getting married and she gave me a portion of the proceed from the land. Isn't that wonderful? All right, so it's the same thing I do for my children when they are going to, say, buy a house or when they are getting married. I give them a portion of money. So that's their inheritance. But my, my daughter says, Daddy, that my, that's my inheritance. You don't have to wait till you die to give me my inheritance. So, but, but I will also give them something. Hopefully, I'll have something to give them. But this inheritance that we are talking about is eternal life that God promised each one of us. So here the scripture tells us in Ephesians 4:30, and grieve not the Spirit of God, whereby ye are what? Seal unto the day of redemption. This is important. So from the prophetic standpoint, a seal on the forehead or on the mind of God's people will enable them to stand. So this is what will enable us to stand. And this is what is found in Revelation 6.17. Who shall be able to stand? So, beloved Christian friends, I want to say today that Satan is fighting desperately against the church. As we look, just we are going to just move forward to the conclusion of our lesson today. Our Revelation 12, 
and verse 17, the dragon. Who is the dragon? Satan. The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which is the church that which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the dragon is Satan. Is that correct? The dragon is Satan. And the woman is the church. And the testimony is the prophetic message in the church as a gift of the Holy Spirit. And so, according to what is there in Scripture, it says here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that what? Keep the commandments of God and do what? Have the faith of Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Day by day we are to keep God's commandments. We are, we are called upon to fear God and we are to keep his commandments. John tells us that we are to make preparation. Uh, then, beloved Christian friends, here it says, the angel is saying, fear God, give glory to him. For what? The hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. So this is very important in these last days because when we talk about the commandments, we are talking about the, the Ten Commandments which include the Fourth Commandment which is the Sabbath day. So God wants his people to worship him and to observe the Sabbath, to find rest and find joy in worshiping him on the Sabbath. Hear what it says in Exodus 31 and 16 through 17. It says, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the what? Sabbath to observe the Sabbath through their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel for how long? Forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the seventh day he did what? He rested from all his work. He rested and he was refreshed. So beloved Christian friends, when, we, when it comes to Sabbath, we should rest. And we should also be refreshed when we rest. We should face the new week happy and joyful because we rested, we have rested and we are refreshed. The Sabbath is a, a beautiful day. The Sabbath is a wonderful day. We should all uh, observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. Ezekiel 20, 12 says, Moreover also I give them my Sabbath to be a what? A sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that does what? Sanctify them. We cannot sanctify ourselves. It is God who sanctify us when we surrender our lives to him. But here we are told, beloved Christian friends, that the Sabbath is important. Here it says, and hallow my Sabbaths, that they might be a what? A sign between you and me, uh, between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. We should be happy to worship God every day. But on the Sabbath, we come together as we are today to fellowship with one another, to worship his wonderful name, and to praise our wonderful God. Beloved friends, let's look at one more Bible text here, as it is stated uh, here in... Um, uh, could you just move that slide forward, please? Move that slide forward, because we are told according to what is recorded there in Exodus chapter 20. It said what? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not, thou shalt nor son, nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? 
Not if the stranger that are visiting you or family members who are not baptized members, they shouldn't be running your washing machine on the Sabbath. They shouldn't be cutting your lawn on the Sabbath. They should just rest and relax and come to church with you and worship God and be happy in the Lord Jesus Christ. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all th them. Amen? Amen? The sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord, what? Blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The Sabbath is blessed. And hallowed means God set it aside. He set it aside as a holy day, as a day of worship. Some people said, well, every day is blessed. But the Bible tells us that the Sabbath day is blessed. It is hallowed. It is set aside as a day that we should come to worship our loving God and our Savior. So I want to say this Sabbath is a sign of loyalty to our Creator. Amen? It's a sign of what? Loyalty. To our creator. So in the end time crisis. The seal is to function as a sign of protection. Uh, the, those who are sealed. Will be protected from the destructive forces. Of the plagues. And the divine wrath of God. So hear what the psalmist said. According to Psalm 53 through 5. Our God shall what? Come and shall not keep silent. The fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very what? Tempestuous round about him. Yes, it shall be what? Tempestuous around about him. Our God shall come. So it, it is wonderful to know that he shall call to the heaven and, and from above and to the earth that he may what? He will say, that's the beautiful part of the text, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a what? A covenant with me by sacrifice. So the Sabbath, we don't worship God and the Sabbath out of convenience. We worship God because he commanded us to worship. And we make a covenant with God. We make a sacrifice. We do everything. Even if it's our job, we don't put our job above what God says. We don't put our parents above what God says. We don't put our schooling above what God says. We put God first because in the end, God is the one that makes the final decision. We serve a wonderful God. So beloved Christian friends, we are to serve God. Let's hear what this text says. Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his what? Angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. From one end of the heaven to the other. Isn't that beautiful, beloved? From one end. And so I want us to take note of this beautiful passage. That is coming up, which is in the great controversy. But this text says, Matthew 24, 34, uh, Matthew 25, 34, Come ye blessed of my Father. That's what God will say, Jesus Christ. Come ye blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Beloved Christian friends, the kingdom of God has been prepared for each one of us before the foundation of the earth was laid. But I want us to, uh, sorry, here it says in the end, when everything will come to its end, Christ will come. It says the great controversy is ended. Amen? The great controversy is ended. Sin and sinners are no more. The entire universe is clean. One pulse of harmony and gladness beats through the vast creation. From him who created all flow life and light and gladness throughout the realms of 
a limited space. Beloved, we cannot comprehend what this is saying to us throughout the breadth of unlimited space from the minutest atmos to the uh, atom to the greatest world. All things animate and inanimate in their unshadowed beauty and perfect joy. God declare all is love. Declare that God is love. God is love. Do you believe God is love? God is love. And so, beloved, as we conclude, it says, from the minutest atom to the greatest world, all things animate and inanimate in their shadowed beauty and perfect joy declare that God is love. So, when we consider that the sixth seal that we are living under today tells us that Christ is coming soon. Christ is coming soon. And beloved Christian friends, if we did not retain anything from the message, retain this one thing, Christ is coming soon. And we all need to keep our commitment to our loving God and Savior. Do you want to be ready when Jesus comes? Do you want to meet him when he comes? Yes? Is it? A yes? Yes? Oh, beloved Christian friends, we all should be anxious and waiting for the Lord to come. If you are willing and waiting for the Lord, would you stand with me? We are delighted today for the individuals who have been baptized. We are rejoicing with them. Heaven is rejoicing. But I want to know today if there is anyone else here, you're not yet baptized, but you want to say, Lord, one day I want to be baptized and be in readiness for your coming. Just raise your hand with me. God will note those hands. You're not yet baptized, but you want to say, Lord, one day I want to be baptized. I want to be baptized. Just pray. Bow your heads and pray, everyone. God, Holy Spirit is working. And if there is one today, this is a call of the Holy Spirit for you to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You will not be baptized today, but someday we will make preparation. We will study with you, and someday you will be baptized. Is there one? Just raise your hand where you are. God will recognize that hand. God will allow his Holy Spirit to work with you, because as we come today, the Holy Spirit is here with us, but Satan is also endeavoring to prevent us from surrendering to Jesus Christ. May his grace multiply in our lives. May his grace be with us and prepare us. Loving Father, today we stand in your presence. We are thankful for the message. We are thankful, Lord, for the promise of your return. We pray that you will help us to be ready for that great and notable day. Oh, bless us, oh Father. May your grace strengthen each one of us. Prepare us so that Nothing will prevent us from entering into your kingdom. Hear us. Thank you for hearing us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. We're going to invite the candidates before we sing that closing hymn. We're going to invite the candidates just to come to the front. We're going to invite the clerk to come also to just present them with their certificate of baptism. And then after that, we're going to sing the closing hymn. So just come to the front here so the folks will see you.
and um, we rejoice with you. And if uh, I would just come to the front, come come right here. I, I, I'm going to invite any family members that are here with them to come and stand close to them too. We 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 are so delighted and happy that you are here with them as they have been baptized, determining to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And beautiful family, we are thankful for all of you who are here uh, to support them. And um, I just want to ask the clerk to, well, she correct me and said assistant is <laughs> here. She's going to present them with their certificate of baptism and their gift. I want to say on behalf of Wesley Chapel Church, we are overjoyed to welcome you to the family and may you continue to grow in grace and faith. Amen. And this has, um, it's a Bible reference and the book that says fundamental beliefs fundamental so, and beliefs. Giselle, welcome to our family Thank you. and this one is yours the pink and guru did i say that right yes, welcome to our church family and may god continue to bless you amen amen, amen. 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 all right yes. all right so uh i could invite the other elders just to come and just shake their hands. I want to just say, God bless you. Keep strong. Keep faithful. God bless you. Keep strong. Keep faithful. We are happy that you have come to support. That's your brother, right? Yeah. All right. Wonderful. And sister. All right. Blessing. Blessing. We are happy. Blessing. Blessing. Happy to see you. All right. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Yeah. All right. God bless you. God bless you. We encourage. All right. Is there any other elders? All right. Brother Fred and any officers, you could come shake the hand. And um, we are just delighted that God has allowed this to be possible. And they will keep rejoicing in the Lord. Just we, 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 we praise God and we ask that he will strengthen us and bless us as we keep growing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So blessings. Uh, return to your seat. We hope to have fellowship with you if you stay with us for lunch. And we may the Spirit of God continue to be gracious unto you. You can return to your seat. God bless. Let's close with our closing hymn, and then we'll have the benediction, and then we'll go to the fellowship hall. And what a service it has been. And we are planning to go home with Jesus. In the meantime, we have to watch. Okay, as we sing this song, may as we leave this place, remember that we have to be in a state of preparedness for his coming. 598.
Oh yes. Comes. Lord, he comes. He comes all glorious. Jesus comes to reign victorious. Yes. Yes. Oh yes. Jesus comes. Loving God and Father, we look forward to the day when you shall come. Prepare us, O God, for that great day. Help us to be wise unto salvation and make ready for that great day. Bless us, O Father. Keep us safe for the rest of this day and for the rest of our lives. May our hearts be surrendered to your divine will and purpose. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.